Hello, my name is TJ Parcell, and I'm the director of this short film on prison sexual safety. But I'm also an ex-convict. When I was 17 years old, I was sent to an adult prison in Michigan for robbing a photo mat with a toy gun. We recognize that coming to prison can be an overwhelming experience for anyone, but especially if it's your first time. Riding the bus in through the gates, every bad prison movie I'd ever seen in my life was rolling through my head. I was in shock. I really didn't know what was going on around me. You stripped of everything. Nail polish, the weave. I just felt like my life was just flipped upside down. This place is a challenge for anybody that comes through the gates. The purpose of this video is not to scare you, but to help you do your time more safely. In the making of this film, we spoke to dozens of current and former inmates. We wanted you to hear from the experts, the men and women who have served their time in New York State. My name is Anthony J. Annucci, and I am the acting commissioner for the New York State Department of Corrections and Community Supervision. I want to talk to you today about an important federal law called the Prison Rape Elimination Act. The inmates, the officers, and the staff that you see standing behind me have all agreed to talk to you openly and honestly about the law, how to avoid sexual abuse, what to do if you are sexually threatened or abused, and the investigation process. I want to personally communicate to you that New York State has a zero tolerance policy for sexual abuse and harassment. What that means, very simply, is this. Even one incident of sexual abuse or harassment is one too many. Anyone who is found to have sexually abused or harassed another person will be disciplined and will be punished to the maximum extent of the law. In conclusion, let me assure you the department wants to do everything within its power to provide you with a safe and humane confinement while you are serving your sentence of imprisonment. Thank you, and stay safe. I was 18 years old when I first came to prison. When I came to prison, I was 19. I was 40 years old when I was first arrested. 29 years old. I was 31. 35. I was 19 years old when I got incarcerated and two and a half months pregnant. Coming through these gates can be very scary. You feel lonely. I became introverted. I was numb. I didn't want to speak to people. I wanted to be by myself. It was a culture shock. You know, when they sent us me, I said, I could never do this. I, I don't know, I have a baby at home, I can't do this. You're snatched from family. You know, you're snatched from support systems, you're snatched from friends that you've had for so many years, and you're in a situation where communication is very difficult. For about the first six months I was here, I cried every day. You feel guilty for leaving your family, you know? You feel guilty for whatever decisions that you have made that have brought you to this place. The shock of being in prison was almost more than I thought I could take. So what were some of the specific fears that you had about coming to prison? Rape, getting jumped, taken advantage of, would I make it out alive? I expected prison to be this chaotic place, this place where people wanted to fight you all the time. Before you come to prison, you get captions of what you've seen on TV of how prison is, you know, big, aggressive-looking women that are gonna beat you up. You couldn't tell me I wasn't going to be raped in the shower or stabbed in the yard. I didn't trust anybody. I felt they were all out to get me. If everybody is honest, they'll admit that they're afraid. It's the people that scream the loudest that they're not are usually the ones that are the most fearful. I was very scared of when I got to the prison because of all the things I saw on TV or if I heard with to the point where I actually didn't shower for a week. But after a week or so, someone came to me and was like, listen, it's not that bad in here. There isn't forced rape here. It's more of a, a, a control thing, a manipulation. You're vulnerable, you're emotional, you're coming, you're traumatized. 
you know, and predators know when you're traumatized, emotional, you're isolated, they know. If you appear to be weak and they feel like they can take advantage of you, that's basically where things go wrong. It's very easy when you get here and you have nothing to fall into the trap of taking something from somebody. You don't get a package for 30 days. So someone will come up, oh, well, you need soap. Oh, you need a t-shirt? Here, I'll give you that too. People try to be your friend or try to give you things. And then next thing you know, they're taking advantage of you. If you don't have it, learn to do without because there are people here that will offer you things with their own hidden agenda. When I came here, I saw that there was a, a lot more subtlety about things. That it's not that it wasn't happening, it's just being done differently. Everything comes with a, a price tag. There's nothing in prison that's free. Sexual abuse in this facility has been going on quietly for years throughout the time I've been here. People look to see if you're needy, you're vulnerable, you know, if it looks like you looking for help, you're looking for companionship, you're looking for friendship. And you do have people who may actually care, but at the stage of you coming in here and you're new here, you don't know that. You might not even realize you're being forced because it's just a gradual thing that's taking place. And if you're naive or you're not street savvy or you haven't been around, you've been sheltered, you may not pick up on it at all. I believe that my appearance automatically makes a predator feel that I'm fair game. Because I like women, so they don't have to try as hard. When I first got here, I was kind of young. I got caught up in a situation where one of the people that I was introduced to, which was an old timer, ended up becoming my girlfriend, which was not a good experience for me. I felt pressured. What I was looking for was actually a friend and somebody to show me the ropes. But because I was coming out of the shock and I was in a vulnerable stage, I fell victim to that. There are a lot of feminine aggressors in here, people that, that look like me that are going to take advantage of whoever they can. Back then, I would have said that I wasn't tricked. But now that I've been here for a while and I've seen how certain individuals can be, now I can actually say that I was tricked. So as a new inmate coming in, what specific things should they be looking for to avoid? Anyone that's overly friendly and someone that's willing to just give you things, you have to just see what the motives are. My best advice is to kind of just stay to yourself just kind of just see, check people out and see what they're about. You want to make sure that when you're somewhere, you know who's around you and what's going on around you. You have to observe. That's the only thing I can say. You're not going to automatically know. And sometimes it takes time. Sometimes you don't know who's the movers and the shakers, who's this, this. You have to sit back to know that and listen. Figure people out before you become their friend. If a 40-something-year-old woman is paying um, a lot of attention to a 17, 18, 19 year old child, that's something that needs to be questioned. Don't feel like you need to be in the in crowd for protection. You can protect yourself. Staff will protect you. And if you see certain individuals that are trying to warm up to you, watch how they treat other people. Because nine times out of 10, what they do to others, they will do to you. If you feel something in the pit of your stomach or that little voice in the back of your head is saying, this doesn't feel right, it probably isn't right and you need to remove yourself from that situation. Depend on yourself, count on yourself, don't trust anyone, and don't take free handouts. It's okay to be afraid. It's okay to be confused. It's okay to be overwhelmed. You have time to get to know your surroundings. You don't have to rush into anything. Um, you might feel like you gotta be doing this, 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 because when you first come in, they are speeding you up pretty fast. You have to take exams, you have to go to medical, you have to do, and it's like That's just the procedures that you have to do, but for yourself, you have nothing but time to sit back and observe. You know, you have to set boundaries. People come and say, oh, um, I wanna to talk to you, and they just wanna come in the shower. Oh, can I come in with you? Absolutely not. I don't even want you to talk to me outside of the curtain. If whatever you have to say to me could wait until I finish. You, you don't have to eat from my plate. You know, all these different things that to some people is normal and to some people they just want to test you to see how far they can get. 
anyone that's automatically coming up to you, oh, I could do this for you, I could do that, I could, don't buy it. They wanna cook for you, they wanna help you at commissary, or they wanna tell you how pretty you are when they know that you have low self-esteem. There are some good people, and then there are some people that will play on your weakness. And the, there are relationships worth, worth developing in here, people that are going to help you on your path. You just have to find them. There's always a sense of loneliness in prison. A lot of women that come in here, especially young teenagers, they're missing either a parent, a mother, or a father, or a sister, or a brother. You might have someone here who's been here for a while, or you know, wiser, they'll be like a jail mother. They're the ones that take care of everything and take care of the person coming in and provides and cooks. The jail daughter is the one that needs a little bit more guidance. You have older inmates that tend to say, hey, you're my jail daughter or hey, you're my little brother or something, if they look aggressive, or my little sister, and you have that family dynamic. We have people coming in here as young as 16 years old, and they're gonna be here for a very long time. We still need that guidance. So you find it within your community. You get cool with them, you play dominoes with them, you play card games with them, you eat with them and you also probably would share clothes and take showers together. But if some family members, they also will start liking you too as well. Some of them can be healthy relationships. Not every relationship that you develop in prison is an unhealthy relationship. However, some of them are not. You see that a lot around here, that it starts off as one thing and then it becomes a sexual relationship. And now you're controlled by other people. You know, I'm entitled to what you have because now we're a family. If you're not strong-minded enough, you will make yourself think and feel like you're obligated to return favors to them because they looked out for you for so long. And anyone that tries to make you feel obligated, you should distance yourself from them completely. These are the unhealthy relationships we see in prison. It's rare you find a healthy relationship in, in a woman's jail. The people that our predators here, whether it's a woman, whether it's a man, an inmate, or an officer, they know who they're going to target. And they're very skilled at finding their next victim. I don't think anyone deserves to be taken advantage of. You know, and it can come in any forms. It doesn't have to be inmate. It can be staff, you know, and that happens also. And all it is is someone taking advantage of you. Some staff could be just as dangerous as the women in green. They can be women, they can be men. Doesn't matter. Just know your personal boundaries for yourself. No one should be overly touching you or, uh, you, you know what I mean, it, too personal. But you, you have to know the difference because you'll get caught up. The boundaries would be if an officer wants you at his or her bubble, for long periods of time. If they give you a compliment of, oh, that shirt really looks nice on you, or you know, anything that's not in the protocol of what an officer is supposed to do. The people here can also be as manipulative too. They're not always victims. There's the name that we call women who play the bubble for a long period of time, the officer station, and our, the name is Bubblettes. That's basically a woman who stays in the officer's face and flirt with them. They're always up there. You know, a little cleavage showing. They're just there, there, there in the officer's faces. Whether it's female or male, it doesn't matter. You don't want to be that person. Because when does it stop, really? You know, uh, you just get yourself all tangled up. Attraction is natural. I see somebody that's, oh, that's a handsome person or a nice looking person, but it's a boundary. It's a line there. You can't cross that line. You know, if somebody approaches you and you feel uncomfortable, say something. Some officers are wonderful. You can go to them at any point and say whatever, and you know that's not gonna go somewhere else and they're gonna address the issue. There's some officers out there that are really, they are genuine. They're not playing when like, it comes to like, our, our safety or someone harassing us you know, for any minor thing or something as serious as you know, what, hey, you know, this girl's been stalking me.
anybody coming into prison that feels like they're being pressured sexually by anyone, inmate, staff, doesn't matter. Tell someone. Don't be afraid to go to a civilian or an officer. At the end of the day, it's your safety that's important. Tell a civilian, tell an officer, write the superintendent, tell a captain, tell someone, because someone is gonna listen to you. If you don't report it, it's gonna continue. If you are in a situation that you know you can't handle, tell somebody. You can ask your counselor for help, your ORC. They're, they're going to be your first contact. If I would have known back then what I know now, I would have went to my OMH counselor and said something because that situation, like, it kind of affected the type of person that I am now. I'm more paranoid of people. If an individual has been threatened or abused, they should tell. It's not snitching. When it comes to your personal safety, it's not snitching. This whole snitching thing is put into place by these individuals that don't want their dirty secrets thrown out there. Snitching is a mechanism used by the individual who's abusing you to keep you silent. You have to speak up. If it's kept and pushed under the rug, there'll be people after you that go through the same ordeal. And by you not saying nothing, you basically perpetuate this happening over and over and over again. And you should never feel guilty about having your choices taken from you. If you've been sexually abused, it's important to seek medical attention right away. Do not wash shower, brush your teeth, or go to the bathroom. Important forensic evidence can be gathered that can be used to hold your abuser accountable. We can also provide you with medical treatment that can reduce your risk of contracting HIV and other sexually transmitted diseases. You have a right to be free from sexual abuse. The persons responsible shall be held accountable to the fullest extent of the law. All complaints are taken seriously, thoroughly investigated, and you have a right to know the results of our investigation. You have an absolute right to report and to be free from retaliation. The department has established many ways one can report sexual abuse, sexual harassment, or related incidents of retaliation. You can talk to an outside rape crisis center, and you can ask them to report for you. You can also write to the Inspector General or Sexual Abuse Prevention and Education Office. If you want to report to someone outside of DOCS, you can write to the State Commission of Corrections. A family member can report on your behalf, including calling or emailing the Inspector General directly. You can file an inmate grievance or drop a slip. You can report to anyone at any time. The sooner you report, the sooner we investigate. My name is Jason Effman. I'm the Associate Commissioner in charge of the Sexual Abuse Prevention and Education Office. It doesn't matter what you did to come to prison. Sexual abuse is simply not part of the penalty. Whether we're talking about abuse by other inmates or by staff, even one incident of sexual abuse is too many. I hope you found this information useful. I want to reconfirm the department's commitment to your sexual safety. By working together, we can end sexual victimization in our facilities. Together, we can make our community safer for everyone. Thank you, and be safe.